Yes. And uh, by Don Morin, is that who it's recorded by? Yes. So the meeting is being recorded by Don Morin. Okay, you notified the chair. And more I am. Chair McGarry and the Board of Assessors reserves the right to remove any or have removed any person or person from preventing threat or continued disruption during the meeting. Roll call of board members. Chair Joseph Regary is here. Clerk Jim Geisman. Yes. Chief Assessor Randall Austin. Welcome. And uh, Administrative Assistant Sandra Gadoya is here. Actually, Assistant Assessor, excuse me. I know, exactly. We need our reading of the November 11th, 2022. Minutes. Okay, at 9 a.m., meeting was called to order by Chair Regary. Chair Regary inquired if anyone was reporting the meeting. None were. Roll call of board members. Chair Joseph Regary, Clerk Geisman, Chief Assessor Randall Austin, Assistant Assessor Sandra Godoya. Chair Regary read the November 1st, 2022 meeting minutes. On a motion by Clerk Geisman, seconded by Chief Assessor Austin, it was ordered to accept and approve the November 1st, 2022 meeting minutes. Public comment. Public comment was opened by Chair Regarry at 9.04 a.m. New old business. Or discuss excise weeks for 2022. On a motion by Regarry, seconded by Geisman, it is unanimously voted to accept and approve the excise weeks from October 31st, 2022 to November 14th, 2022 in the amount of 6.11.84 for CY 2022. Ways and means meeting discussion. The board discussed the documents LA-3 and LA-13 that were sent to the DOR, waiting for approval from the DOR. Chief Assessor Austin mentioned that it was sent to Sandra Brusso, but it will be turned over to Paula King, who will be our new representative. Chair Regary mentioned that Ways and Means meeting will be held tonight at 6 o'clock via Zoom only. Also, the City Council meeting will be held Wednesday, November 16, 2022 at 6 p.m. at the John Zahn Community Center via Zoom. Guest Eleanor Mandel of 24 Church Street entered the meeting at 9.14 a.m. Chief Assessor Austin stated the DR needs to approve the LA-3 before the council can vote. He will notify Sandra Brusso the date of our council meeting. Chief Assessor Austin showed his presentation and recommendation to the board, which will also be presented for the Ways and Means meeting for the, in the council meeting. Guest Ginny Disorder of 43 Silvercrest Lane entered the meeting at 9.20 a.m. Based on... Chief Assessor Austin's information that was present, presented on a motion by Regary, seconded by Geisman, is unanimously voted to accept the recommendation to not adopt a small business exemption for FY23. Motion by Regary, seconded by Geisman, it was unanimously voted to accept the re recommendation to not adopt a residential exemption for fiscal year 2023. Eleanor Mandel provided a memo which was read to the board. It was stated that she wants public access with request information from the citizens of Greenfield. Guest Al Norman of 21 Cornell Street entered the meeting at 9.48 a.m. Clerk Geisman inquired the term calculation ladder. Chief Assessor Austin explained that it shows all the different aspects of how to get the valuation of a property. Councilor Disorder discussed what would be helpful for the Ways and Means Committee meeting the percent of residential versus commercial and industrial from last year to this year. Councilor Disorder discussed the concerns with 7 Legion Ave at 173 Main Street. Councilor Disorder also mentioned a building, building permit issue at 163 Chapman Street. Chief Assessor Austin believes he has looked at 173 Main Street. We will look into these properties and discuss at a future meeting. Al Norman discussed areas of in inequity for commercial properties and residential properties. He is interested how the assessor's office looks at properties, how the valuations are determined, and what the different factors of each type of property. Next scheduled meeting is December 6, 2022. Discuss statutory exemptions in executive session. Motion by Geisman, seconded by Austin, was unanimously voted to close public comment at 10.14 a.m. Yes, Mandel, Disorder, and Norman left the meeting at 10.14 a.m. Motion by Austin, seconded by Geisman, is unanimously voted to open executive session at 10.14 a.m. Motion by Austin, seconded by Regary, is unanimously voted to close executive session at 10.35 a.m. Motion by Geisman, seconded by Austin, is voted to adjourn at 10.35 a.m. Respectfully submitted, Senator Bedoya. Okay. I have one amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when we were talking about the Ways and Means discussion, 
and we mentioned Sandra Brusso, but doesn't really say who she is. Okay. And that, you know, where she's going to be turned over to public, and she could just put in Department of Revenue representatives. So, Department of Revenue. Yeah. That Paul and Sandra are from the DOR. Right. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to motion approve. To accept. A motion to accept the meeting minutes. Second. Second by Austin. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Would anybody like to make a motion to open public comment? I'll do that. I'll second. Second by Austin. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, before we start, should yep. we have a, a list of the guests? Yeah. As we did previously? Yeah, sure. That sounds like a fine thing. We, um, we are going to open up public comment. Um, speaking time is three minutes for each person. If you'd like, state your name and address and let us know what you'd like to say. Anybody have any comments at this time? Um, I do. I'll start. Okay. Um, and I'll, um, I'll stop when I believe that the Board of Health Inspector is on the way. So when she gets here, I'm going to stop my comment, if that's permissible. Um, okay, so your name so my name is Virginia DeSorga, and I live on 43 Silvercrest Lane. Um, I'm talking. I'm here to talk about the disturbing history on the property on 13 to 15 in Dell Street that will be brought up in a few minutes by Jennifer Hoffman. It was addressed at their publicly at their last Board of Health meeting. Mr. Regieri purchased the property as a foreclosure in January of 2010, and in 2020 put it into a, an LLC, Regieri LLC. He was a a Greenfield assessor at the time of the purchase. The property had an, an occupied illegal third floor apartment when he bought it. He continued to have a renter on that third floor. Renters generate income. Complaints of cross wiring throughout the building dated back over 10 years. A third floor tenant stated he paid for the electrical for the second floor unit. It was a three-unit dwelling with only two meters. The building inspector and the fire department became involved. There was no second egress. By January 2017, that tenant, a male, was out, and the sink was disconnected, and Mr. Regieri signed a statement that he would not rent it again. This year, we found out, again, that there was a tenant living on the third floor apartment, and that water had been coming into that apartment. And then on the second floor complained about the water coming in from the third floor, and this had been going on for a while. The previous long-term owner of this property also owns multi multiple commercial properties throughout the city, as does Mr. McGarry and his family. They are both called upon to fill out and sign income and expense reports on many of their rental properties. These reports are an important factor in determining the assessed value of their real estate. The fact that our Chief of the Board of Assessors repeatedly did not tell the truth over an extended period of time on this property calls into question the valuation of all Mr. Regieri's pro properties and casts doubt on the value of the properties of the other long-term owner as well. Sadly, this was not a mistake or an isolated incident, but instead a pervasive problem. By devaluing his own property, Mr. Aguirre increased the tax burden on the property owners who told the truth. Imagine the implications as the city defends itself on an appeal process before the appellate tax board or when the Department of Revenue reviews our overall assessing practices. I believe that he should resign. And I would like to point out that the other members of this board, including um, Randy Austin, has been here less than five months, six months. He's brand new to this. We have uh, two other members here who have been serving in their positions for less than a year. So I don't want to cast aspersions onto this entire thing. We need you, and we need this issue to be addressed. That's all I have to say. 
Actually, I'd like to make a comment. I would like to make a comment. Oh, go ahead, please say um, your name. My name is Ryan Whitney. I live in Greenfield. Um, uh, you know, I, I've been following politics for a long time in this town since I've moved here, and um, there's a lot of nepotism that goes on that's unaddressed. This is definitely a clear conflict of interest, Mr. Geary, and you should step down. You honestly should. You're cheating your neighbors, your friends, everybody in this town. And everybody's in this room is, sh I'm shaking saying this, because this isn't fun. We don't, you know, if you were just a regular dude, no one would be on your ass, but you're the assessor. We, we look at you and we go, oh, please, like, please do the right thing. And when we continuously find, this isn't the only thing we found about your properties. There's many more. You should step down, sir. The nepotism is disgusting. That's all. Gene Wall? <clears throat> I'm Gene Wall and I live at 301 Countryside. I come before you to address the issue of building permits. As the chief assessor for the city of Greenville, Mr. Gregory does not seem to be aware of their importance in the assessment process. My understanding is that building permits are the process used to identify new growth in the city. They must be accurate regarding the cost of the project. They must also be timely regarding the start and completion of the project. Permit permits that are never closed or permits that aren't accurately reflecting the cost of the project can skew the accuracy of all assessments in Greenfield. In Greenfield. Projects without permits are also harmful. If a property that has been greatly improved without a permit sells for much more than the adjacent properties, those properties might unfairly have the assessed value increased. The carelessness with which you treat this process as chief assessor causes all the taxpaying citizens of our city to question their assessment. They also ask if they should reveal their improvements or try to hide them, as you have successfully done for many years. I realize that you have contributed many hours and much money to volunteering in Greenfield. Thank you for your service. However, the time has arrived for you to voluntarily resign from the Board of Assessors. You can use that newly found time to correct your problems with the Health Department and to correct all the mistakes you've made on past building permits. The citizens of Greenfield deserve a Board of Assessors that believes following the law is important. Uh, Doug Mayo, uh, uh, 143 Wells Street in Greenfield. Uh, I just want to say that I am appalled at hearing this uh, because uh, chiefly for the reason that uh, meeting after meeting at uh, City Council we hear that the uh, Greenfield is is uh, money strapped and we're uh, the, keep coming to council and we have to make some tough decisions about uh, what we can fund and what we can't fund um, and knowing that uh, properties are not being valued the way that they should be and uh, uh, and it's being hidden and permits are not being uh, pulled the way that they should uh, completely that that's money that could be going to the Greenfield caulkers uh, uh, and Greenfield wouldn't have to be uh, calling uh, to the council uh, if the money was straight um, so I uh, I believe uh, uh, Councilor DeSorger um, uh, said it correctly uh, that uh, if these problems, they need to be uh, addressed immediately. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I concur that you, you should resign uh, because these are long standing problems and that, uh, um, that they need to be corrected and that they can't continue. So, thank you. To make comments. Um, well, we're, my name is John Hoffman. I'm the health director for the city of Greenfield. And um, we're here because our, we had a technical problem at our board meeting and forgot to press record. Um, so apologies for that. 
but during our board meeting we um, we cover all different topics so we have the board aware uh, we do our disease updates we do and it's pretty much in the same pattern we do disease updates we do properties and we do restaurants and then other stuff that we're thinking about um, or any other big issues that are happening um, and what happened was uh, 1315 Riddell is a property we have been working on separately from zoning so it's two separate issues so the permitting and all that and how it's assessed is different from what our concerns are. Now, my inspector Nicole Blayback has been the one that was taking point on this inspection, um, and I was in the background and discussing um, with uh, Commissioner Snow um, things that were going on in parallel to the housing violations. As for the violations, um, is on the second floor apartment the tenant had a leak that he's been complaining about stemming from the third floor for approximately two years um and there was text messages and communication going through and it was not being addressed um we um he called us approximately a few months ago when we got involved um and we reached out uh, to the owner of the property um, and basically um, here we are however on that note we visited the property with Commissioner Snow yesterday uh, the third floor tenant was actively moving as we were there um, there was a delay in time for this person they were supposed to be out about three weeks ago um, uh, but they were moving out yesterday um, as for the second floor apartment, the owner of the uh, property said that um, he's going to get sheetrock, so on and so forth, remove the um, shower from the third floor apartment and fix whatever the issues are, and that should be done within a couple of weeks. So, um, as, and, and we're going to follow up, obviously, and see if that's true. As for the zoning, um, it is assessed as a two-bedroom home, a two-apartment home. It is. It was when we were there, even yesterday, a three-apartment home. Um, but the owner of the property stated that they are not going to have it as a, a property anymore and either they're just gonna use it as storage or have the second floor apartment and the third floor apartment as one unit. Um, so that is what's going on. And, and honestly, I think everybody knows that uh, the health department is going to follow through with ha housing violations no matter you know who <coughs> it is. It's our role to make sure everyone is getting, you know, their time um, to have corrections made. No one should be living with leaks where mold could develop and other issues. Um, so, and especially something ongoing for a couple of years. So that that's just a little excessive. Um, so, uh, any other comments that I left out? Any? I don't know if you have questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments for public comment session? Yes. I do. Please. Jackie Thibodeau, I'm at 13 Silvercrest Lane. I'll make this very short, and as you can see, I don't have a paper in front of me because it's all in my head. Um, I really feel that you should be a big man and resign. And I know. You're laughing about it and you think this is funny, but it's not. We're paying very high taxes. We live in condos where we don't own the outside. And you know I've been here many times for abatement requests and have been denied. The only time we were accepted is when we went to the appellate board. Um, 
I'm paying almost $7,000 in taxes on a two-bedroom condo. And I know that some of your pals or cronies are getting big abatements. And I'm not naming any names, but I really feel, and I think everyone in this room feels the same way, you should resign your position. And that's it. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. <clears throat> and this left nine Silver Crest Lane. <clears throat> I guess for the two newer members, um, I can continue where Jackie left off and just shed some history because we've been involved with the assessors board uh, and it goes back to 2017. We appeared before the appellate board um, based on you know the application for abatements not granted so then the next step is the appellate board and that was for the taxes in 2016 and we actually um, the board ruled in our favor and said that the assessments reflected the fair market value so we've had you know minimum of five years doing uh, different research and do a little bit more each year to prepare for our statements when it comes to abatements. And um, I feel that um, Mr. Regari is taking advantage of his position as an assessor. Um, as Jean talked about building permits, Mm -hmm. uh, for property owned and also uh, building permits and changing um, and incorrect information being recorded on a property record card, which is a very important aspect of the assessor's duties. Um, I have a property record card from 2021 which states that there was a new kitchen, new cabinets, countertop, and tile floor insulated, reframed with new windows, and a new bath installed. The cost, according to building permits, was well over $80,000. The renovations reported on the property record card are $7,112. The newly, re newly renovated property with lap pool and other amenities on 1.1 acres is twice the size of my condo and the assessed value at that time was 288700 which is about what the condos are going up and up and assessed for. So there's a assessment inequalities in the city, and I don't know how much um, is affected, but every time that we do some research, it comes back to something involving Mr. Regeer. And so, um, I feel that he should not be involved on the assessor's board at all. Thank you. Are you able to make public comments? Yes, please. Um, I, my name is Marianne Bullock. I live at 179 Hope Street. Um, I think I want to share like a little bit of a different take on this from the first time I heard about this issue. My main concern was the tenants that were living on that third floor. I've worked in human services in Greenfield for 13 years now, and we have the entire time been in a housing crisis. I myself moved to Greenfield on a housing voucher because I was no longer had a home to live in um, and was able to purchase a home in Greenfield and put an addition on it. Married to a contractor, we pulled a permit, we built that addition, we paid the taxes on our, on our property. My, fa my own father was unable to find housing for the last year. He's a retired vet. I was able to purchase a home for him. Any, any of work that needs to be done on that home, I know <coughs> needs to be permitted. Right? I'm, like an, I'm an ordinary citizen, and I know this. The concern that I have is about this tenant who's been paying rent on this property for I don't know how long. And now is in an emergency situation where they have to move out and find a place to live. And so I'm hoping that moving forward, now that the choices that have been made have come to light, 
that this tenant has been given more than first, last, and security to find a new place, that they've been paid back some of that back rent that they've paid to you, that they've built equity into your property with, and that they have a place to go. I also just want to say, like, I have some compassion for what you're going through. This is obviously not an easy thing. And Greenfield, we have a problem right now where we have people in positions of power that are making bad choices and that it's not being rectified and they're not being accountable for those choices. And so I don't know if the thing is for you to resign, but I know the thing is for you to start being transparent about what happened and why you made the choices you did and what you're going to do to rectify and be accountable for those choices moving forward. Anybody else from public comment? Okay, um, I guess we'll move forward with the meeting. Uh, tackle new old business. Uh, excise weeks. There's just two small ones. These are for November 14 to December 10th. Okay. One for 21. Calendar. Okay. Entertain a motion that we approve the motor vehicle excise and the dates noted. So, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? The motion carries. Previous years, we 
cut it to the wire? Is it we looking like we're going to be able to yeah, print these off and be able to? Yeah, because okay. I've heard the story of, you know, on Christmas Eve or, you know, trying to, to bring everything home to get the billing ready, but we're, we're <coughs> advancing that. Yeah, okay, good. And that's our goal. <laughs> or it's going to be my goal yeah. going forward to try and get approval and have everything ready prior to when the council is, is used to voting on it. So the sooner we can get done better, if they want to vote in advance, well, they'll be able to, in theory. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, at least to have our, on our end, be ahead of the game and not get to the point where you're waiting until you're having the city, city council meetings in December to get your tax rate approved because then it's crunch time. Yeah. The office like it was in, you know, in previous years. So. Okay. I'd like to note that the, I thought your presentation of the Ways and Means and the Council meeting was professional and I like how you broke down the comparisons based on the different categories for each town so folks can kind of see where we fit in and um, I just thought it was, it was well done. Thank you. And yeah. I appreciate that and actually also got some good input so that we can update it. Good. So, uh, make sure that we have uh, the comparisons and the concerns that other people have brought out because they're looking for a little bit. Uh, Councilor Healy, I think, was looking for some more statistical information yeah. on some of the towns that we did comparisons with, and I thought that that was a good idea yeah. to give some you know, population and uh, income info to give a better uh, idea comparison wise to the field. So, sure. So we'll be working on that. Okay. And hopefully, we have a you know, every year I'll, I plan on doing some type of presentation. And you don't want to be presenting the same thing every year. Sure. So it's good to have that and kind of uh, concentrate on something different or try to bring some different point forward uh, to sort of educate the council and give them additional information so that it's not just dry and, and humdrum, but sure. you know, keeps you in, involved in understanding the process. Okay, good. Anything else with the... Day to day business? Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Anything on TIFs? Have, do well, you have a TIFs meeting? Uh, we are going to be having a TIFs meeting. I have one coming up later in the week with Ashley Adams. Yep. And that's another one of the things, other adjustments that need to be made when we're talking about the building. This is, those, those are some of the other things. It's okay. TIFs, too. Yep. Because okay. any TIF or agreement that you have for any type of adjustment in value, this is where in the actual building. Mm -hmm. um, where you need to make sure that you have your plans. Okay, good. Okay, any other new business that we want to, old business? That's it. That's right. Okay. Really, we just, I think we need to move on to our statutory exemptions. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I'll make a, I'll make a motion to close public comment. And I'll just second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, it looks like our next scheduled meeting might be December 20th. Okay. If needed. Otherwise, we'll be working into January. Yeah, considering the timing, you can play that by year. Okay. Because it's quite early for the board. Yeah. And there's nothing to do almost. Should, we, should, we, just, should we just make it for January 10th? Does that work? Or should we check the meeting? Room. Yeah, we'll have to look at the coordination yeah. room. Okay, let's set a meeting for January 10th, 2023. And in executive session, we're working on just statutory exemptions. Is that yeah. that's all you have on the agenda? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to open. Yeah, I'll make a motion to go into executive session. session. Seconded by Jim. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? No. Okay, we'll go into executive session.